So if you watch my channel normally, like when you say normally, as in you're subscribed, you watch my videos, you are cool like that, then you will know that I rarely make videos like this. But after spending my entire weekend trying to figure this out, um, yeah, I strongly recommend if you plan on modding for GTA 5 that you take these steps because they might save your GTA 5 online account from getting banned. And if you want to lose all your progress, get banned for a month, things like that, just for modding that you may even have not even intended to do, then I strongly recommend that you follow this guide. Now, I'm not sure if all modifications will get you banned, but what I do know is that small modifications like skins, different car wraps, things like that, things that aren't in the vanilla, like complete vanilla copy of GTA 5, that counts as fair game for Rockstar to just straight up. Reviewing your account, we can see that it has been banned for repeated violations in GTA Online related to modding, abusing game mechanics, manipulating protected game data, or otherwise interfering with the gameplay experience for others. Okay. Your ban is permanent and cannot be appealed. So if you don't want to be put out of your misery like that, then don't do what I did. Now, I wasn't banned, but once I found out what I was supposed to do, it took me to uninstall GTA 5, reinstall it, and then something happened, so it had to reinstall again. And for whatever reason, TELUS, which is a Canadian internet service provider, was just not having it with me that weekend. So, um, yeah, I it was, so, it was the slowest update I think I've ever had. So what should you do to avoid that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that your vanilla client of GTA 5 has zero modifications. It has to be 100% vanilla. Now you can do this a whole bunch of different ways. You could do it the short way of don't mod your GTA 5 clients, or you could do the long way like I did and mod your GTA 5 client before you knew that, and then you have to uninstall and reinstall. Or you could use a program such as OpenIV, which dissects or allows you to dissect into your GTA 5 files, like very deep into them and you can alter modifications. But if you are not exactly sure what you modified and you just wanna be safe, then uninstalling and reinstalling might be the best option. The next thing that you wanna do is you want to, I know this isn't gonna seem like an ideal option, but it's the only way. You're going to want to take all of your GTA 5 files and move them to a completely separate folder. And usually what you're gonna do is you're going to put your mods onto that folder of GTA 5. So once your computer is done duplicating all of that, and if you have an SSD, then that should be a lot quicker than a hard drive. Once you're done with that, then you can install your mods into either the original folder or the new folder, it's up to you. Personally, I'd say that you do it in the new folder just because of the next step, but it's truly your choice. And then this is the most important part. This is the part that I learned and makes this all worth it. You're gonna wanna download a modded launcher. Now the one I use is the most popular, I'm still trying to get it to work because it's a little bit finicky. It's made by a YouTuber called BroXE, so if you want to subscribe to BroXE then you can do that. It's simply just called Modded Launcher, works with RPF Mods 2.2. I'll have a link to it in the description, it's on gta5mods.com. I'll have a link to it in the description, it's on gta5mods.com. And it is a super simple app, but it really helps to help clean up your GTA 5 mods and things like that. But it really helps to help you organize your two different clients of GTA 5. Also, actually, I do have a, um, also, actually, I do have a separate idea. You can use something such as GTA 5 mod removal, which I just found out existed literally a few seconds ago. And I wish I knew that because then I wouldn't have had to reinstall GTA 5, but whatever, I guess I didn't know that. So I'll link to that in the description too, if you want to check that out. But essentially the way that this splitter works is that now, essentially, the way that this app works is that it's a splitter. So when you open it, it'll say which mode you want to play. And then you will specify the location. You only have to do this the first time, but you specify the location of your vanilla GTA 5 client, and that will be your online client. I have a friend that uh, took it a, just a little bit too far, and um, he got banned yesterday. So, yeah, um, don't do that. And then what you want to do is you want to specify your solo mode, which is going to be your modded client. And essentially, once you're done with that, you select Steam version or whatever version you're, or whatever, um, I guess, launcher you're using. And then you can just open that every time you want to play GTA 5. And you'll have the choice between online, which will be your vanilla client, and your solo client, which will be your modded client. And that way, you have basically no risk of getting banned. 
I really wish I knew this before, like I said, because it took me a whole weekend to get this to work. And it's still having some issues, so I'm going to try and, you know, figure that out. But if you have modded yet, use something like the GTA 5, like OpenIV or some dissector tool to remove your mods or, you know, duplicate it and then remove them all. I don't know. You can do whatever way you find easiest. Everyone's situation is different, but personally, I really wish I knew this before. Now, something else, something I'm going to leave just as some food for thought. Um, if you do plan on modding for GTA 5 online... I, I've done it before. I'm not going to lie. I have done it before. I didn't use it to like kill people and mess around with them. I just kind of used it to test out things. I wanted to see what was, I, yeah, to be honest, I, um, I, I got too much power with a mod menu. I didn't get banned, but I'm never modding again. When it comes to online, I'm just, I, I learned a very valuable lesson. Even if you're just going to money drop yourself, it's just, it's not worth it like i i tried it i had a friend money drop me and it just it doesn't feel it just it feels like you're it, like it is cheating and the thing is that some people may be okay with that but it just doesn't feel right like now that i look back on it it just yeah I, I wish i didn't do it to all the level 500 gt5 players i'm sorry i know i know i modded um yeah i i apologize i really do and i promise you that i will never mod and kill someone or mess around with the server kick people something like that all i really wanted to do was just try out the oppressor but anyway i hope you enjoyed if you are cool and epic then you'll leave a comment if you're not cool and epic then you will leave me alone and that will be that'll be pretty depressing but i mean it's your choice and as always i hope you enjoyed and see ya